Well, hello and welcome to this week's episode of Abiding Glory TV. I'm Ryan Wyatt. I'm very excited today to bring you uh, an interview from a dear friend of ours, dear friend of mine personally. His name is Joshua Mills. Many of you have heard of Joshua. Uh, he's an incredible young man of God who's moving in great signs and wonders and really just carries the heart of Jesus. I just love uh, people that are friends with God. And we're about to tune into uh, a question, uh, Joshua answering a question that I asked him. And the question was, what do you see God doing here in this hour? And Joshua responds about the shakings that are happening in many people's lives and how it's ushering in the glory of the Lord in to your life and why uh, what is the purpose behind the shaking and the glory that's coming so we're going to tune in right now to Joshua Mills and I'll be back with you to share a little bit more I think um, right now all over the world God is manifesting his glory he's pouring out tokens of his love signs wonders miracles and all different kinds of manifestations of it and it's coming because the Bible says that in this day that the earth's going to be shaken, the heavens are going to be shaken. So I believe that the heavens are literally being shaken and the goodness of the heavens is touching the earth and what's not of God and that's of the earth is being shaken out. So there's like a, a shifting and a sifting that's taking place right now. I see a lot of shifting um, in ministries and churches among different people in the church. A lot of Christians are going through this shifting. And sometimes I think when people are shaken, they feel almost like um, they get a little bit scared or they, they get worried about the shaking that's taking place, thinking, you know, maybe they're going to lose something that's dear to them or maybe it's going to cost them everything. But I found when God begins shaking the heavens and the earth, he, He's literally, the only things that can be shaken, um, well, let me phrase it like this, that when the heavens are being shaken, God's pouring out eternal blessing, but when the earth is being shaken, it's all the things that are not of God that's being sifted out and shaken out and so I see a lot of that taking place right now a lot of ministries going through the shaking and there's you know there's turmoil for a moment and there's things that go on but it's to bring us into the greater glory and in all of the shaking and all of the shifting there's a lot of miracles that are being released there's a lot of eternal purpose a lot of destiny that's being released in these days and so that's what I see happening right now well, wasn't that awesome? We just heard from Joshua Mills talking about the shaking that is taking place in this hour. And you know, in the Word of God in Hebrews chapter 12, it talks about how when God's kingdom comes, it will shake everything that can be shaken. But it's a very good thing. Many of you have been feeling maybe the turmoil and the tribulation and the, the shaking that's going on in your life, but it's because God is coming and He's shaking everything out of your life that will hinder the full release of the glory of God in you and through you. So I was so appreciative of that message from Joshua. We're going to tune back into Joshua now as he answers the question that I just asked him. I asked, said, Joshua, why do some people in this, um, in this time where the glory of God's being poured out with uh, significant signs and wonders and miracles, why do some people and some ministries and some churches not experience the release of this? So tune in now with Joshua Mills, and I'll come back in in just a moment uh, to explain what's going on here. Blessings. I believe that even as the glory is being released all over the earth, that as long as people are satisfied with the status quo, they'll never see the greatest things that God wants to do for them. And it's like the miracles can be happening everywhere else. They can be happening to their neighbors or to their sisters or to their brothers. But until somebody truly gets hungry and thirsty and gets to the point where they say, God, I am not satisfied with where I am right now. God, I'm not satisfied with the way that church is right now. I'm not satisfied with my relationship with you right now. I just want more. I want... I hunger and thirst after that righteousness. The Bible says that there's a promise to be filled. So I believe that whenever there's hungry and thirsty people, there's always a promise to be filled. Now, some people ask me, why am I not seeing this particular sign? Or maybe I'm not seeing this particular manifestation. And I think this in Mark 16, it says that signs will follow them that believe. So number one, you have to believe. And then Mark 16 describes what kind of signs are going to follow. It's, you know, you're going to speak in tongues. You're going to be able to cast out demons. You're going to be able to lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. But then also the Bible speaks about uh, extraordinary miracles being performed by the hands of Paul. And so even beyond the signs that are listed in Mark 16, there's also a realm 
of extraordinary or unusual signs and wonders and miracles that God's wanting to unfold to the church. But I think our focus has to be on Jesus Christ. It has to be on the presence of who he is. And out of that relationship of intimacy and being focused upon his face, then all those things are going to flow. And when we come into a relationship with him where we're so devoted and so looking unto him, then it's like it doesn't matter what he wants to do, just however he touches us, we're happy with it. And I think sometimes people get off track because they say, well, God, I want the gold sign or God, I want to have oil flow from my hands or, or God, why don't you turn my water into wine or God, why don't you give me a gemstone or God, why don't you do this? And it's like, why don't you just stop telling him what to do? And why don't you just start looking unto him and letting him do whatever he wants to do? I believe that he does want to release gold. He's, he, you know, he's releasing gemstones and oil and, and there's angelic experiences with feathers falling and manifesting and all these things. But it all comes out of a relationship with him in that intimate place with him coming into the secret place. And then once you're in saying, God, whatever's here, I just take it. I just receive it. And I think when we've seen people manifesting in those unusual signs or wonders and miracles, it's always come from that place of intimacy, not because they've said, God, I want this, but because they've said, God, I want you. Well, you just heard from Joshua Mills sharing about why many people in ministries and churches do not experience uh, signs and wonders and miracles in their midst. And I loved, absolutely loved Joshua's answer. And the answer to that uh, is that Jesus should be our focus. He is the most fascinating. He is the most beautiful person, God-man, to ever exist. He has, he has had no beginning. He has no end. And so many people are seeking after the fruit of what happens when Jesus comes. But what we miss is that Jesus is the focus. I am praying and earnestly desiring a day when an entire generation will be absolutely fascinated and absolutely captured by Jesus Christ. You know, David said, in the Psalms, he said, one thing I desire that I might dwell in the house of the Lord and gaze upon his beauty. And when a generation rises up, and I believe it's happening even now in this hour, where they have one desire, one thing in their heart, and that is they want to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. They're not captured by uh, the angels and the signs and the wonders and all those kind of things. They're captured by the beauty of of Jesus Christ and the fact that he is so completely wonderful, so completely otherworldly. There is nothing that compares to him. And I want to tell you, when you get to the place where you're fascinated and captured by Jesus and Jesus alone, that will be the moment where God will pour out miracles, signs, and wonders on your life. The Bible says in Matthew 6, it says, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. The, the central focus of the kingdom is Jesus Christ. And when you seek him first, and I encourage you, many, many of you that are watching right now, it is a, a time, it's a fresh season for each of you to find a place on the floor. And, you know, sometimes maybe some of you are going through much warfare in your life. I want to say this. One of the greatest forms of warfare you can ever do is to get on your face before God and find an intimate place with Him. It's not always marching around the room, praying violently in tongues and, and pulling down strongholds and all these kind of things. When you get into the secret place of the manifest presence of Jesus, I call it going above a snake line. You know, when you're climbing a mountain, they have what they call a snake line. And it's when you get to a certain height, the snakes cannot go above that point. Well, when you ascend the hill of the Lord, when you ascend the mountain of the Lord, and you step into that secret place of intimacy with Jesus, the things that are hindering you in your life, they can't go to that place. They can't step into the secret place. And all those weights and all those burdens come off. And in that place is where the glory of God comes on your life, that cloud of his presence comes on your life and the miracles and signs and wonders begin to take place. I want to tell you, and I want to close with this, 
Many of you have so many things <clears throat> that are in your life that are distracting you and hindering you. I want to say this. God is looking for space to fill. God is always looking to fill things. And one of the greatest places you can come to is a place before God where you are empty, where you come to Him and you say, God, I'm emptying everything else out of my life, every single thing right here in this moment because I want you. And in that moment, you're creating a place for the Holy Spirit to come and fill. And Father, I just pray for those that are watching right now that your presence, that your tangible glory right now, I tell you, I just feel it right now here in the studio, God's heart for you. And I pray that right now through that camera lens, through that, that computer screen that you're watching right now, that Holy Spirit, you would come and tangibly come upon them with a, a spiritual hunger, a deep desire, a deep calls unto deep desire in their heart to get on their face before you and to create a space for you to fill with your glory presence. In Jesus' name, I'm Ryan Wyatt with Abiding Glory Ministries. I encourage you to get on our website and uh, go through our resources that will help uh, take you to that deeper place and equip you uh, to enter into that place with Him. Specifically, there's a resource that I've come out with that's called the School of the Supernatural, where I talk about how to, uh, in the nuts and bolts and the, the how-tos of how to put yourself in a place where you quiet your mind, you empty yourself out, and you get before the Lord. You can find that at uh, our website, abidingglory.com. It would be a true blessing for you in this season of intimacy with Him. Until next time, blessings. Well, I want to share with you some of the incredibly exciting things that are happening here in East Tennessee and with Abiding Glory Ministries. As you know, we are in the process of birthing and raising up a regional and even international apostolic base with the mandate of raising up an army of passionate believers to advance the kingdom of God around the world. Well, now you'd be excited to know that we've launched what we call the Habitation. The Habitation is Abiding Glory's church, and it's our local body of believers that serve as the very backbone for this apostolic base. It's an awesome time every Sunday morning as we come together corporately as a community and as a body to worship God. Our worship is raw, passionate, edgy worship, just all out after God. You'll receive equipping from fivefold ministry and a real atmosphere of community as we encourage each other to live a supernatural lifestyle with God every day. If you're in this region or you're passing through and you're looking for a community of believers to gather together with to go after God in a raw, passionate lifestyle, then I encourage you to join us at The Habitation. You can find all the details on our website at abidingglory.com and then go to the Habitation section and you'll find the location, the times, and all of those uh, interesting details that you'll need. Bless you. We look forward to seeing you.